expert inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Tom Abbott, who's in one of my favorite places in the world, Singapore. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing great, John. How are you? Excellent. And Tom is from the sales optimization company in Singapore. He's a, an author and speaker, author of social selling, author of 21 selling strategies and he speaks and uh, and consults and all that stuff and today what we're going to talk about is mindset for sale for selling success okay so let's talk about mindset tom why is mindset so important well i think john when you when you look at at sales it's probably one of the only jobs out there where you actually face rejection on a consistent basis. I mean, you've really got to have this thick skin, this positive attitude, and this resilience. Because if you don't have that, you're, you're not going to be around for very long. So having this, this mindset, this positivity, this you know, never say die, never quit, never surrender attitude is absolutely critical. So how do you develop that? Because it's an easy thing to say, to tell somebody, it's, okay, you're in sales, you're going to hit, you're going to get a lot of rejections, and maybe you're on a run of rejections, right? How do you help people uh, kind of fortify their mindset so they're able to overcome and they're able to see that they are making some progress, which hopefully they are, but they're able to overcome the, the rejections? Because it's one thing for people to say, yeah, I know I'm going to get a lot of rejection. It's another thing to get a lot of rejection. <laughs> yeah, so you can kind of be ready for it mentally, but not like emotionally, right? That's the key. So, I mean, as you said in my intro, John, I mean, I travel all around Asia Pac, so I'm based here in Singapore. I do consulting, training, speaking to about 15 or 20 countries throughout the year, mostly around Asia Pacific, all the way up to China and Dubai and all around. Mm -hmm. And what I find with working with like thousands of sales reps is the mindset is something that's going to separate them from everybody else. So, like you said, knowing it is one thing, but believing it is another. So one thing I try to instill in sales reps and all of our programs is just this understanding that they're not saying no to you as a person. They're saying no to this opportunity at this time. Right. So when you can separate yourself from the decision, from the product, from your company, from the industry, the market, when you can kind of pull yourself out of that, it, it makes life a whole lot easier because you don't personalize it. Yeah, and that's a tough thing for people to do, obviously. And I think it's hard sometimes to remember that, let's face it, your prospect isn't operating on your time, time frame. You're not, usually, you're not their first consideration. They have a job. They have all these other things going on. So sometimes, I think it's hard for said because sometimes when maybe they're not getting feedback or somebody's gone quiet on them, they do kind of take it personally. Absolutely. It's very easy to take it personally, to feel rejected, like, oh, they rejected me, <laughs> they turned me down. But that's not really what it's about. I mean, we know that, but that's, that's something that you have to get used to and to be able to brush it off and just kind of move on to the next one. I mean, sales, as we know, I mean, it's a cliche, but it really is a numbers game. Mm -hmm. And like Mark Cuban said, every no brings me closer to a yes. Yeah, absolutely. But you've just got to have that belief. So uh, obviously dealing with rejection and getting yourself in, the, in a good positive mindset is a, is a good step forward. What are some other things you need to do in, in order to have a success mindset? Well, I think one thing that I encourage people to do is, is to draw upon past success. So I'm a big believer that, you know, what you've done in the past can somehow serve you mm -hmm. now in the present. So I work with a lot of sales reps that maybe are new to sales. They might be new to sales or new in their industry, and they don't have a whole lot of experience. So they feel like, how can I, how can I sell? How can I succeed? So what I encourage people to do is to just remember that if you sold anything at all in your life, whether it's at another company, even a different industry or a different product, different vertical, if you've had some success in the past, think about what were some of the biggest challenges you faced in that sale? Mm -hmm. How did you overcome those? And what was the result? I mean, how did it positively impact the customer? So to really draw upon past success as sort of a, a roadmap to success today. Yeah. And even if it is your first job, hopefully you sold yourself into that job, right? Well, you would have had to. So that could have been your first sale. But let's mm -hmm. also be honest. I mean, if you've ever uh, been in a relationship, if you've ever had kids sure. or a husband or wife or parents, we are negotiating, we are selling 
all the time. We are trying to influence all the time. We're trying to get buy-in all the time. So if you've had some success dealing with people at some point in your life and influencing them one way or another to see your point of view or to, to help them in a way that you think would be useful, uh, congratulations, you're in sales. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's a great piece of advice is, is drawing on, on, past, uh, on past successes. Because I think sometimes you need to remind yourself that you're good at what you do, that you have had some successes uh, because it can be, as we say, if you're on a run of, of rejections, it can be hard and you can start to lose confidence and you have to go back and say, no, actually I have done this and I've done this successfully. And if I keep going and if I keep focusing on what I'm doing, I'm making sure I'm doing all the right things. It'll come together for me. Exactly. You know, you hit it right there, John. So one thing that I always talk about in our sessions and my keynotes and whatnot is something called the, uh, confident, competent, infinite loop. Mm -hmm. All right. So as you become, you know, competent and you practice things and you get good at it, all of a sudden you start noticing your confidence level goes up. Right. And you start, fe and you start feeling like, okay, I got this. I've got some mojo. I've got, I got some moves. I can do this. I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling good. So when you're confident, guess what? You try new things. You take risks. You try things. You accept mm -hmm. some challenges. And then when you do that, guess what? You start getting better at things because mm -hmm. you're taking these risks. So as your confidence level goes up, you start to try things and your competence goes up. Then, of course, as your competence level goes up and you're actually getting better at things, your confidence level goes up. So mm -hmm. it's this infinite loop of confidence and competence. So you just got to, it's like a chicken and egg. What came first? It doesn't matter. Just get going. Yeah. And I think a, an important part of that, though, is as you are developing is to be consciously competent, right? To understand what are you doing that's contributing towards your success? Because, you know, let's face it, a lot of people can be unconsciously competent, right? So they can, <laughs> they can be successful and not really pay attention to what it is they're doing in order to be successful. So then when they hit a bump in the road, they, they have nothing to, you know, they can't refer to, okay, maybe I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this the way I was before. So I think it's important to understand what you're doing to contribute towards your success, right? Absolutely. You've got to have that self-awareness. You've got to have that insight and you have to have a process. How do I do this? So when I talk about sales, I always talk about there's two aspects to sales. One is the people side. Mm -hmm. How well do you relate to people, body language, looking at buying signals and being able to build rapport, all of that stuff, right? You know, networking skills, negotiation skills, that's all the people stuff. You need the people stuff. But you also need the process. Right. There's a systematic process. There are stages and steps that buyers go through along their journey. There are stages, steps, and processes that we as sales professionals have to adhere to to advance the sale and get those prospects to move one step closer towards commitment. So we have to be aware of the, the people side, but also the process side, which is super important when you look at a company. So we, we step aside about the mindset of individuals and look at the mindset of an organization. When you're trying to scale and build sales teams, what you're really looking for is not to hire a sales people, mm -hmm. build an A sales process that even C plus or B people can replicate that process. Yeah, I'm 100% mean, I agree with you. And I think often uh, you can see that it, it's when people stop following the process or pay lip service to the process is when things start to, to go sideways. And I think that, and here's one of the things, uh, you, you know, traditionally, a lot of people have said, well, you know, sales is not really process oriented, it's really more of an art. But yet the highest performing organizations, and the top performing salespeople f actively follow sales processes and sometimes sales processes that are mandatory. Absolutely. And I think, you know, a lot of people have a misconception, like you said, John, when they think about sales. They think about this, this salesman or salesperson with charisma and they can kind of connect with everybody and schmooze well and they're a good talker. Mm -hmm. But I think that's kind of the, uh, the stereotype, particularly of a B2C sales professional, mm -hmm. where it has a lot more to do with you as a person. So when I first started my sales career way back in the dark ages in financial services, I would sit down with parents at a kitchen table and talk them through a registered education savings plan. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's what we would call a kitchen table sales. You got a baby screaming in the background and you're sitting here with mom and pop and you're 
going through your little binder and your little your slides and everything and trying to you know show them the benefits of, of a of a REFT a savings plan. But that's more about you connecting, and that's a B two C level. How do they feel working with you? But when you're looking at a corporate enterprise B two B thing, it's less about you. They could love you, but not have confidence in your product, not have confidence in the company. Um, you're not just dealing with one decision maker, you're dealing with a number of stakeholders buying centers with different layers of how that decision will be made and input from a number of different people. So it's not just about you as a, as a person with your skills, but do you understand the buying process of that organization? And do you have a sales process where you can follow up consistently with value um, at a number of different touch points? So it's just a whole different ballgame in B2B. Yeah, and I think part of it is is here is the idea that it isn't just, I mean, there's mindset and there's belief and, and all of that, but there's also discipline, right? And that's yeah. part of mindset is you have to have the discipline to follow the process, to do all the things that you need to do. And that's just, that that's almost more important in some ways because you can't just have a great mindset and great belief. Uh, but if you're not doing all the other things that you're supposed to be doing, it's not going to get you that far, right? Absolutely, John. So discipline is part of that mindset. So you'll find some people that are, you know, they're great off the cuff, but they don't have that discipline day in, day out. And we all know, I mean, I can already tell, I mean, I've listened to your podcast. I've been following you for a while, John. And, you know, you've got this outgoing personality. You love to talk to people. And that's probably what, and that's why you have a podcast. And that's probably what brought people like us into sales. Mm. We love people. We love to help people with solutions to talk to people. But we also know that there are less interesting elements to the work that we do. Sure. Right? So I'm a huge proponent. I love CRM. I think it's essential as far as process in sales. But let's face it, most salespeople don't like spending time in front of their computer or on their mobile uh, entering their uh, meeting notes and tracking the status of opportunity. But guess what, guys? That's a huge part of this job. Because most of your job, you're not in front of customers. You're trying to get in front of customers. Yeah. And when you well, get in front of on how that meeting was with the customer. Yeah. And when you get in front of that cus- customer, you want to be as informed as you can possibly be, because let's face it, that if, if, if I come back to you or follow up with you, Tom, and I've forgotten half the things that we talked about before, <laughs> or I didn't note them down properly and I start repeating myself, you're going to say, listen, Golden, come on. Yeah. Um, you're absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you've got to be prepared. You've got to be disciplined, right? So, I mean, we've got, for example, I've got a, a, a new sales guy in our team that we just hired a couple weeks back and we've got him, you know, I'm coaching him one-on-one, working very closely with him every single day. And the first thing he does as soon as he comes in is he checks our LinkedIn messages. Mm-hmm. Not that exciting, not that sexy, but it's like, you got to go through it. Has anybody mm-hmm. reached out? They have any questions? They'll go through the LinkedIn messages. And then we've got this, this cadence that we go through, this sequence that we go through where he's following up with some, some outbound leads. And we got day one, do this. Day two in the morning, do this. Day two in the afternoon, do that. And we got this nine-day cadence that he's got to go through. Some of them are more interesting than others, whether it's LinkedIn, <laughs> WhatsApp, uh, call, um, uh, email. I mean, so there's different parts in this sequence, and some are more interesting than others. Yeah, and it's an, it's an inter- interesting point that you raised there because it is one of my soapbox ones. Uh, um, <laughs> sorry, sorry for everybody who's heard this before, but uh, we we live in a culture today um, that you know this idea of uh, everything should be exciting. My job should be like I should be happy in my job every single second of every day, and and if I, and if I'm not, then it's somebody's fault. Why aren't you making me happy here? But to your point, right? There are lots of aspects of our job that. Yeah, they're not that interesting. Uh, maybe they're actually things we hate doing, but they're part of the job. And in order to get the to get to do the bit that we love, we have to do these other pieces. And I think that's why process is so important. And people need to understand that. Um, unfortunately, part of your job is going to be mundane. It's going to be boring. It's going to be irritating at times. But you have to love the other part, the other piece enough to make it worthwhile. And that's, you know, it brings it right back to the word discipline. Mm-hmm. So I'm, a huge, I'm a huge tennis fan. I love to play tennis. I play all the time. I played last night. I'm a little bit sore this morning. You know? <laughs> so I played for hours and I love to play. So I like to be on court playing. Yes. But to, to optimize my performance on court, 
I've got to make sure that I'm disciplined around, did I have a certain meal before? Did I bring right. snacks on court? How will I recuperate after in terms of meal, mm -hmm. water, hydration, and stretching and cool down? And also preparation, because as the years go by, it's not as easy for me just to hop on court ready to go. I've got yeah. to do some preparation. So the stuff that you see on court is just the byproduct. It's the end result of all the work pre and post. Mm -hmm. And you need to have that discipline. You can't just wing it. No, absolutely. And I think that's a key part of the, of, as you say, the success mindset is being willing to put the work in. And I think that's another uh, thing that people should take away. If you're, in a, if you're in a slump right now, as it happens to everybody, as long as you can honestly say, I am doing the work, I am putting in the work, maybe I'm putting in extra work, but I'm doing all of the right things, you'll eventually work your way out of it. Well, and I think the key with slumps is this, right? And I talk about this all the time in like my motivational keynotes is how to get out of slumps. And the first thing is you have to recognize when you're in a slump. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's the first thing because quite all, hey, it's normal, right? A slump can be a day, a week, a month, a quarter. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So now you got to start noticing what's going on here, right? So the first thing is the awareness. Am I in a slump? Mm -hmm. Then you've got to look at why. Mm -hmm. What's going on? And it's usually only two reasons. It's either external, so there are some forces happening out there. Um, customers are putting a, you know, a spending freeze, or there's increased competition. You know, what's going on out there? Some, some regulations that might be impacting your industry. Are there some external factors? And that could be the case, but that's usually a scapegoat. Mostly, it's internal. Mm -hmm. Mostly, it's your motivation level has gone down, you've become complacent, you're bored, you're just kind of uh, it's the same old, same old, so you're kind of skipping over things. You're not qualifying as well as you used to. Your discovery calls are, are shorter and weaker and, and less in-depth than they used to be. You're not following up as, as frequently with uh, as much intent as you used to. Um, you, you know, you're not fighting as hard. You're not as hungry for the sale as you used to be. So there's a lot of things going on that's usually internal. So you need to recognize that and get back to basics. So to be quite frank, you know, one of my, one of my taglines, this mantra that I live by, is uh, the more you learn, the more you earn. So mm -hmm. people need to be lifelong learners. I always say that, you know, learners are earners. So you've got to have this mindset of always learning so that you can keep on earning. And so many people, they just don't learn. And they usually say, I don't, I don't have time. I don't have time for online programs. I don't have time to read books. I don't have time to listen to podcasts. I don't have time for audiobooks. But I'll guess, guess what? They say they don't have time, but they're watching Netflix instead of networking, mm -hmm. right? They're on Facebook instead of reading books. They're procrastinating instead of prospecting. So they're always finding excuses for their own position, and they just need to learn more. Watch, you know, videos like this, podcasts like this, read audiobooks, sign up for an online sales training program. Yeah, I, I, the, again, you just hit on one of my other soapbox items too, so... Again, sorry to everybody. <laughs> but, I'm but, sure it's uh, worth repeating. Yeah. But to your point, right, it's, it's, we don't have enough time to do this, right? But we've all got hobbies, right? And I guarantee you that everybody listening invests a, a quite a lot of time in their hobbies outside of work, right? And unfortunately, oh, okay. as much as you love tennis or I like martial arts or whatever, it's not putting bread on our tables, right? What's right. putting bread on our tables is our day job. So why wouldn't you invest a little bit of time in, in your day job, in invest in training yourself and in, in learning more, as you say, and in trying to improve? Uh, because that's the thing that, as I said, puts bread on your table. I guarantee you you're spending time and money on the things that don't. Oh, for sure. And it's not that hard to do. So for me, I'm just a junkie. All right. So last, last night when I was coming back from, from tennis uh, in the car, I listened to two of your podcasts. Mm. How hard is that? Right. So I listened to two of your podcasts, got you know, more familiar with the program, the guests and all this kind of stuff. And I really enjoyed it. So there's no excuse for that. Yeah. When I'm waiting in a huge immigration line, yeah. when I'm traveling, <laughs> what do I do? I put on my phone and I'm just listening to podcasts. Right. Our new sales guy that we hired, um, he spends uh, at least half an hour a day. He's going through our online sales training program, SoCo Academy, mm -hmm. and he's watching the videos there so that he can also, you know, enhance his sales skills. So there's no excuse. There's always time. It's how are you allocating your time? 
Yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. I mean, once upon a time, maybe you could have made an excuse, but let's face it, there were still books, there were still things you could have done. But you know, pre-internet days and all of that, and pre-digital media days, you could maybe have sort of made an excuse for it, but you certainly can't do it today because there is an abundance of resources out there to help you. Absolutely, you've got you've got a, a dictionary, you've got a library, a library back in the day. So you know, some of your your viewers won't won't remember this, but back in the day, we had to go to a place called the library. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where we read books, physical books that yeah. were already outdated by the time we got there. Exactly. But that's where we got our information. I remember Encyclopedia Britannica, man, and that's where you you got everything. But yeah. now you've got the whole thing right here in the palm of your hand on your phone, and there is no excuse at all to not know how to qualify, how to prospect how to do good lead gen, how to follow up, how to do discovery calls, how to close, how to handle, uh, answer objections, key account management, you name it, there's no excuse not to learn how to improve in your role. Yeah, and, and as, as, we, as we bump up against the end of time, I mean, we kind of come full circle here because the only thing that's holding you back here is your mindset to do these things, is to invest in yourself, is to, is to continue to do all the right things. As you say, if you're in a slump, is to look at why am I really in a slump? Am I really doing everything 100% yeah. or have I slacked off? Listen, well, here's one thing, final thing I wanted to share yeah. real quick, John, and I just love this, to, to your point. At the end of the day, there's always going to be winners and whiners, okay? Right. Winners and whiners, right? So the whiners will complain about everything. Their product's too expensive. It doesn't work well. The market's saturated. There's too much competition. Customers aren't buying. They have all these excuses. They're whining. Winners, on the other hand, they're not blind. They're not ignorant. They're aware of all of those things. They just don't let it stop them. That's mm-hmm. the difference. The winners persist despite those challenges. And in every organization I work with, you're going to find a blend of winners and whiners. So the only difference in those organizations is the individuals in their mindset. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's a, that's a great summary, Tom. So before we go, I'd like you to just tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more about you and your company. Yeah, so our company is called SoCo, S-O-C-O, SoCo, the sales optimization company. We deliver private in-house corporate sales training program, uh, mostly to B2B sales professionals in the tech space. You can find out more about us online at SoCoSelling.com. You can also visit SoCoAcademy.com for our online sales training program. You can access that 365, 24-7 in the palm of your hand. And you can follow me on all social media platforms at SoCo Selling. Excellent. Listen, thanks a lot, Tom. And I uh, encourage everybody go to SoCo Academy. Uh, as we were just saying during the, our conversation, there's no excuse there. Um, SoCo has everything for you there. So you can go ahead and get your sales training. And the thing is, you know, one thing I will add, and I'm sure you find this in tennis too. Like I do martial arts and... and uh, I used some, to do martial arts. I yeah, love it. And sometimes people... Uh, you, you know, if you've been in sales for a long time or any job for a long time, you think, uh, you know, I know everything. I don't have to go. I've got the basics covered. You know something. It's the basics of the first things that go. And, you know, in tennis, you probably practice your basic strokes as much as you do. I mean, martial arts sometimes, you know, it's, you know, the master will come in and we'll be doing like the most basic kick for the whole hour. And you're just like. Oh God, how many like million times have I done this? But it's because of that that you can do everything else. And I think that's a great lesson. And I think that's why regardless of where you are on your sales journey right now, going back and rediscovering or reinvesting in the basics is a great idea. Well said, John. You know, they say in tennis, the number one thing, watch the ball. <laughs> watch the ball. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. If you're not watching the ball, really, there's a... Uh, well, you know, there's, uh, there's not much you can do in the game, is there? Your, your racket's Definitely. not going to do it on, on its own. Well, listen, Tom, again, this has been great. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.